moving on now a bit more to spiritual and scientific cosmotheism, we see a deep connection to understanding oneself from the highest spiritual potential, even down to a sense of self and ego. So mandala science is very uh, connected to evolving. It's like a mind map to the inner world. It's a uh, a mind map linking the very core of ideas and conceptions to bring a sense of unity to the self. Very beautiful concept uh, to bring about such peace, beauty, harmony, and all these positive principles. Looking into such, even though you're approaching and, and diving deep into very seeming complex subjects, the lotus can somehow bring about not only a sense of unity in the core of one's being, but also a sense of unity with the reality of the universe, with the reality of the cosmos. Just as there's an outer blossoming of cosmic energy into the current forms of the universe that we can observe through space, also a blossoming of one's life as one evolves through life from young age to old age. And we can see that this blossoming is happening in modern times with just the sheer art uh, related to the lotus. This whole presentation based around sharing this lotus and we can see the, the art moving into deep levels of fractal nature we're realizing that nature itself is deeply fractal. It's a self-replicating system. Depths of reality, there are these spiritual energies and that when they are coming in touch with this material world, they materialize and they take a similar shape to their original spiritual forms. So we see this concept which we'll be talking about, this this blossoming of spiritual energy, then the materialization of this energy. We even see this in the mathematics, so whole new areas of fractal mathematics, which correlate to nature. In, in fact, even touching on deep mysteries in mathematics, such as the zeta function of the primes, we'll see this blossoming and flowering coming from this kind of almost inconceivable geometry. The deep connection, these mysteries, when they start to take shape, the blossoming of the prime starts to look like the very essence and, and shape of the lotus. And we'll see a lot of this beginning to happen, where a lot of these high energy physics and cosmologies start to take on very lotus shapes, fractals moving from core structures to more complex and very interesting fractal structures. We also see this in the torus and in the vortex and the mathematics that arises from studying the vortex, which is a very important aspect of modern mathematics, physics, and also cosmology. We also find a deep connection to this form in the electromagnetic spectrum and in the electromagnetic energies because this form takes shape around the magnetic fields. We'll see this sacred form of Om and the vortex taking shape with the explosion of particles into other exotic particles from photons into positrons and electrons and this spin, this symmetry of particles coming out we start to see this lotus form taking shape like a blossoming of wisdom. These sacred forms, they offer such a deep potential to evolving ourselves mathematically, scientifically, personally, on all levels, and we'll get to that soon, some more of that. The cosmos is the very source of our understanding of reality in the outside world and how we've come to be. This cosmic journey will uh, take us to places which 
reveal the very secret of the lotus flower. This is the best time to realize the very sacred and powerful potential of the sacred lotus. That so much energy and care and love is going into this sacred form for a reason. All of these beautiful artworks and scientific things, they're getting us ready for a new age of thinking, a new way of doing mathematics, a new way of doing science, a new way of thinking that brings together everything. So let's get ready for diving deep into the potential of the Lotus and how this brings cosmology, science, and the future of science, in fact, to the center point. The Vedas and the ancient texts speak about a spiritual dimension that takes shape of this very, in the modern sense, they use the word supersymmetry. In the higher cosmic energies, there's this very blossoming form which gives rise to various spiritual dimensions that are nearabouts invisible because we're held in a space separated from that. But in fact, the very black body of space and time is reflecting and evolving that form as a reflection. So the spiritual world is like the real thing and the material world and the materialization of energy is like the reflection. And so that's why there's a similarity in this world. We can see that through looking at the multiverse model, how there is a original spiritual dimensions and how they give rise to the dimension of matter that we live in now. The Vedas and the ancient teachings point to a spiritual world that takes on the form of this sacred thousand petaled lotus, meaning a kind of ten to infinity. Many modern mathematical theories, like uh, in geometry and what they call the mathematical monsters, can kind of touch on these spiritual concepts of one without a second. We even see this in the lotus where it takes the twin lotus form from one, two things manifesting. And so the god and goddess being the two forms of the same reality. We find the spin of matter and energy, in fact, spinning to that very left side in the same way that the goddess Radha is on the left side. And that our universe that we live in is spinning. The models also are very important to bring about an understanding of higher spiritual energies and the materialization of those energies through the black body of Mahavishnu. That original form, when it's reflected in the causal ocean or the black body, is very important because it allows us to conceive of a source to all shape and form, not that its origin came from nowhere, that it actually has every form and shape, that the materialization of form happens through a gradual or cyclic manner. So the original spiritual lotus dimension or super symmetry of the universe is hidden in a non-material transcendent reality and it rises up through energy and as energy condenses into its external form or the material energy it also takes on this symmetry and you see that symmetry on the large structures and even on the small structures and this unity of the large and the small through supersymmetry string models m theory they're, they're kind of a blossoming of understanding of these cosmic higher energies and how they even give rise to the symmetries of biology from the simple and to the more complex. And these Vedic models are very important to understanding dimensionality, higher dimensions, marginal dimensions, external dimensions, uh, and all kinds of dimensions which are seen through the lotus
So the lotus exists in its root forms, in its stem forms, in its flower forms, and in various other ways. These help bring about a multi-dimensional view of reality um, and how supersymmetry, how things become symmetrical. The flowers are all symmetrical. Our bodies are symmetrical. And we also see that in, particularly in the lotus. So the lotus is very important for going deeper into bringing a sense of unity to uh, this deep ancient mystery. So it talks about the black body being an extension of the original supreme person and that this form in a cosmic sleep breathes forth the various galaxies and universes. So this black body of which we only see a little bit. So visible light is only one small part of the black body radiation. So we're only seeing a very small part of that visible energy. And yet these big portions of dark energy and dark matter, which are highly complex or difficult almost to understand even for modern scientists, which make up the majority of space and time. So this evolution of energy is like a lotus from the roots of the super force blossoming forth into the various forms of energy. And we see this blossoming in a sense of like the origin and the reflection. So the materialized reflection of the lotus is this material world, whereas the original is related to the super force and a sense of space and time like the petals of a lotus. So Einstein and great scientific thinkers, they have also somehow come in contact with this lotus geometry. And it seems that by chance, but actually it's the very nature of space and time. This sacred form is the source of the spiritual form as well. Because the spiritual form is untouched by matter. Time and space are represented through the lotus because of its blossoming uh, from its coming in a hidden way as if from nothing out of you know the mud and blossoming into the beautiful lotus flowers just in the same way that galaxies are blossoming forward or even universes for that matter for the various models of the multiverse so the many models of the universe and the multiverse from the deeply fractal where a galaxy is seen as an energy fractal blossoming forth from the black body of the cosmos. Here we also see a deep connection to the very great voids with the pores of this ancient being, this cosmic being called Mahavishnu. Very deep aspect and from him blossoms multiverses, from him blossoms the great voids of the cosmos which are like bubbles in a pond. So our galaxies or our universes as well are like little ponds in the forest of the cosmos. So we're gonna be talking about the forest a lot because being in touch with nature is something very important. The ancient rishis, they saw the connection between nature and the universe and had this deep connection that the universe is blossoming in the same way that the forests around us and the forests that humanity has evolved out of have also blossomed. And that we should be back in touch with nature because nature offers key understandings to the modern models. So is it the universe mimicking nature? Is the forest somehow churned out from the structure, the hidden structures of the universe? So the hot and cold of, you know, the universe condensing and liquefying and crystallizing into the world we know today. <laughs>